bonjour weekday wanderers welcome to paris my name is jackie today we're in the 10th arrondissement we're at the This is the Gare de l'Est. It is relatively small compared to the other train station. Um, and it's also probably the most logical and easiest to navigate. And uh, my family use it all the time because my husband is from the east of France. And of course Gare de l'Est means this is where he heads home when he goes home to see his family. Or when we go home to see his family. So, so this is the Rue de Strasbourg. This is um, bus 38, which is actually the bus that comes back to my house. Uh, and of course, uh, the other left is also on line 4, which is my line. And uh, line 5 and line 7 metro as well. Okay. So this uh, plus here is called the uh, plus. 11 November 1918. Is that correct? I got all the dates right now. Um, addresses and places like that in France are often very tricky because they consist of a date, which makes it very long-winded. So of course, this was the um, place commemorated uh, in honour of the uh, signing of the armistice after World War One. And this street actually that we're on here, tick -tick 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 -tick, it was called the Rue de Strasbourg, but it's not anymore because it's now called the Rue 8 Mai 1945. So another one of those uh, streets that have a really big long name because it's a date. Okay, so actually um, one of the first places my husband lived when he first moved here to Paris was this street and his apartment was right on the corner down there um, and so yeah he had a really fun long address to have to recite for this time so I'm sure he's used to it um, hello Nick welcome nice to see you it is the Gare de l'Est you're right yes so here we are Gare de l'Est like I said I think it's quite a pretty station got a little bit of um, scaffolding over there but yeah other than that it's quite pretty Okay, so down towards here um, is the Boulevard de Magenta, which is on the corner also. Um, you can see this building down here. This is the Marché Saint-Quentin. Um, it's a covered market, which has been there since the early 1800s. Uh, the building um, has very much um, Eiffel Tower kind of feel to it. Um, and it's very popular with the locals, obviously. Judy says, hi everyone, please say hello and tell us where you're at at the moment. Okay, so part of the reason I wanted to bring you here today is I will be heading here soon, obviously when we head off for our Christmas visit uh, with the family. Um, what they have here every year for, well they've had 39 of them now, is the Marché uh, d'Alsace. So it's the Christmas market. Um, which uh, centres on things from Alsace. So of course, like all of the big stations in Paris, uh, they all head in a certain direction. So this one's obviously the Gare de l'Est, which um, heads in the east. And in the east of France, we have Champagne, uh, Champagne Ardennes. We have um, Lorraine, and we have Alsace. Okay. So that is all called now. That's the region called La Grande Est. And this is the region that um, I see my husband's from. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to go visit the um, the Marché de Noël here. So it's a very small one. Okay, next is I'm in Noisy Le Grand actually. Oh, I have a friend who lives in Noisy Le Grand. And I was there recently. Um, okay, so I have to use my pass sanitaire to come in to the Marché de Noël. So I will pop that out, get ready for that. And I will. Hopla. Bonjour, monsieur. Oh, okay, we oui, will. Oui. Bien sûr. Okay, so I'm just going to wait to show my pass sanitaire. This, this train station was uh, started um, originally in uh, 1849. Bonjour. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Uh, 1849, and it was actually called the Paris Strasbourg train line. Uh, and say that at the top of here it actually has a little statue that says Club Warner and um, probably been, I should have pointed it out when I was back further but basically uh, this you have this beautiful structure here which was the original train station and then um, this identical structure on the other side here um, was added in 1931 so they've basically doubled it because obviously um, uh, they needed to be bigger but this one is like nearly a hundred years younger than this one here and uh, when we go inside you'll be able to see a little bit of the difference okay so here we are we're going into the Marché de Noël um, so Alsace What's cool about Alsace? Well, lots of stuff. They love their wine. The wine is very good. Lots and lots of wine available. Some could say that Christmas was invented in Alsace. Uh, we were talking um, elsewhere that it was the Fête de Saint Nicolas this, uh, this Monday and of course Saint Nicolas is uh, a very important saint in uh, Alsace and Lorraine. Okay, Alsatians love their um, sausage meat products. Bonjour. Uh, Judy says, Alsace, what's cool? We, uh, what, uh, where do we start? The third area. Um, well, if I was to head to Alsace, the first place I'd go to would be Strasbourg, obviously, because it's really easy to get to from here. Um, often it's the same train that we take to go to Thomas' parents' place, my husband's place, um, that continues on and ends up in Strasbourg. Strasbourg is such a beautiful city, I love it. It's very old, a lot of beautiful history, a lot of beautiful buildings. They love their beer there, of course. They love their bretzel. These are bretzel, not pretzels, bretzel. Um, but then, of course, if you are in uh, Alsace, they also have oeuf de cigogne. So these are stork eggs. So the storks are on the migratory, uh, the um, Alsace is on the migratory path of the storks. Bonjour. And there's kuglas, the traditional Alsatian um, patisserie. There's bigger kuglas. And of course, pandy piece, which are divine. Um, how are the prices? What sort of prices are you referring to, Judy? You're talking about. Um, Food in general here, or 
it's a Panji Peace Food Banger. So uh, we're a big fan of these. So um, from uh, in Alsace, going from um, Strasbourg, I would highly recommend going to Colmar. I haven't actually been, well I have been to Colmar but I was asleep. So that doesn't count, does it? Look at these. Gingerbread men, it's my hand just for size comparison. The food prices where you are, I mean it, it's, it's good, you can get some deals, it's just like any other market. Um, but the thing is that a lot of this stuff is not readily available here in Paris, so the fact that it's here now means that, you know, it's, um, you're getting something for a reasonable price, but that is really difficult to normally get. Normally if you were trying to get it, it would be really expensive, but here it's kind of like a reasonable price. It's actually quite small this year for obvious reasons. Okay, the other places in, um, in Alsace which are awesome to go to, um, if, if you could only go to one place in a um, in, in small town, um, uh, Alsace, I would say go to Kikivia. It is literally like you've just walked into Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The city is just gorgeous. Um, and yeah, I just can't recommend it enough. It's a bit touristy, but it's kind of worth it. <laughs> okay, Munster. This is the most famous cheese from Alsace. Munster is a town in Alsace, I've been there. And of course, the, um, there's a lot of they have a lot of very specific foods there. And oh, this is a tom de chef. These are quite big. Um, one of the most famous foods from Alsace is a choucout, uh, which is uh, sausages and ha um, legs of ham and uh, sauerkraut. You might like to call it. So anyway, it's, it's quite small this market. I think I've just done the rounds of it. Yeah, we have. All right. It's smelly cheese, but very tasty. Yeah. Well, I mean, I personally can't stand chef, but uh, um, my daughter and my husband they love it. So, so there we go. There's the Marché de Noël. Very small, and it only runs from the first to the 17th so it's a very short run Christmas market and as I said it's very specific stuff to uh, Alsace and that's kind of what makes it special okay so um, we're out of the market now we thought we'd pop into the Gadu list just to show you inside like I said it's really simple inside um, so I was talking about San Nicola um, which was uh, celebrated on the, uh, the Monday, just been. And San Nicola is very important for people in Alsace and Lorraine. Um, okay, let's have a look inside this building. I hope that I don't lose reception. Um, it's quite open here, so I'm guessing it should be fine. Now this... It's quite an, um, a special thing because Max and Spencer has unfortunately uh, fallen foul to Brexit um, and for the Anglophones living in Paris it's kind of a, a bit of a godsend that we have, we have had Max and Spencer because we can buy a lot of Anglophone food products here but um, they're pretty much all closed and I think this is one of the only ones left open in Paris at the moment so it's kind of sad but I'm sure we'll survive. Okay. So you can see this building. See the architecture you've got here? It's, it's similar to what's outside, obviously. But uh, that's reminiscent of the era that it was built in the 18, this is 1849, but yeah, it was, this rebuild was done in 1854. Okay. 
It's very quiet at this moment in time, but of course, um, once trains arrive, then um, it gets super, super busy. So this little uh, thing here is the uh, original uh, zero point from Paris to Strasbourg. So this was laid in 1849. So from here, um, that's where the train used to go to Strasbourg. Okay. So they've done heaps of new stuff here. There's heaps of great shops and cafes and uh, these restaurants. There's actually a hotel upstairs. And if you go downstairs, let's just take you over here. Um, lots and lots and lots of great shops. Next is um, zero kilometers. I was thinking I was, it was the Notre Dame uh, zero kilometers. Well, there's a lot of zero kilometer points in Paris and obviously the one at uh, Notre Dame is one of them. And this one is, like I said, this was um, where the, train that ran from Paris to Strasbourg, it was called the Paris, Paris Strasbourg train. So going down here, there's a lot more shops down here, lots and lots of shops, um, but there's also the metros down here. Okay, so that's line 4, line 5 and line 7. This is one of my favourite shops. It's the Cotton Gallery. It is a shirt and tie shop because I have a shirt and tie fetish. They are absolutely gorgeous and real cheap too. Well, not cheap, but you know, good prices. So if you're looking for a beautiful shirt and ties and cufflinks and, and suit, men's suits and stuff like that, um, they've got a beautiful, beautiful selection here for a really good price. Okay. Now, um, uh, where can you get to from here? I already said it's everywhere in the north, uh, sorry, the east of France. Um, for day trippers, going to Champagne, you would do that from here. Okay, let's go have a look at the Débat Grand board. So we have Strasbourg, and we have Dijon, which is in the Bourgogne. We have Nancy. Uh, Chalon of Champagne, so that's just on the, um, on the border of Champagne and Paris and the de France. And Bois, which is a little bit more south but still over in the east. And Strasbourg again and Reims, because Reims is the capital of the Champagne um, area. Reims, it's pronounced Reims, which doesn't look anything like Reims, does it? Yes. Okay, so. As you can see, very simple. They have um, all of their lines literally in a row. All their um, keys for the uh, the train. I think there's 30 at the moment. They're doing some extension work. Uh, yes, uh, Nick says that there's a beautiful Christmas market in Strasbourg. Yes, there is indeed. Um, I mean, it's uh, like I said, it's probably one of the homes of Christmas. <laughs> um, and uh, I still haven't been there. I had booked to go there a few years ago and we cancelled for some reason. We were just really busy, I think. And that was the time we had our terrorist attack at the, at the market, which was really awful and uh, kind of, well, very scary. Um, and we haven't had an opportunity to go back. So um, maybe someday soon. Okay. So yeah, a very simple train station. Um, like I said, I use it quite frequently. And one last thing I just wanted to show you here was the um, Rue d'Alsace. So this was the road on the left hand side of the train station when we first uh, showed. So this is Rue d'Alsace. But the funny thing about it is, and this is something my husband wanted me to point out, was that in the middle of the street, because the street actually continues past here, but you see there's a, um, a beautiful set of stairs here. Beautiful staircase. And it just seems really weird because this is Rue d'Assas, and then you go up the stairs and then the Rue d'Assas continues for the same uh, amount of, you know, steps in the other, other direction. Um, but you've got these beautiful stairs in the middle. 
So the stairs were actually put there because they are part of the water conduit from the Canal Duc, um, which provides, um, provided the water supply for Paris back in the early 1800s, which was actually suggested and implemented by Napoleon when he was a, a conseiller de, de France. So before he um, made himself um, the big boss man. So he did do some pretty awesome things, and this was one of them. Uh, so yeah, so the water conduit comes down here, and um, it, it, uh, the, the falling of the water creates pressure, which um, helps um, helps the water supply pump around the city. So yeah, okay, that's right. I was going to show you one more thing. So it's very quiet here at the moment. Um, somewhere else in um, um, we've got the Depart Ile de France. So these are the local um, destinations. There's the Chateau Thierry, which is uh, so these are all in Paris, in the region of Paris. Um, there's Meaux and Coulommier, which are actually types of cheese. Brie de Meaux, you heard of Brie de Meaux? Well, that's where it comes from, it comes from Meaux. And Coulommier is a type of cheese which is very much like a camembert. And, um, and then uh, Provence, I just showed Provence before and it's disappeared. There we go, Provence. Okay, now Provence is an amazing place. Provence, I went there during the summer and it is um, a medieval city. It was uh, the largest city in France back in the medieval times and it was almost classed as the capital of France for a while. They even minted their own um, currency. Um, they got the most amazing uh, old buildings and chateau and uh, there's a chateau fort, like a, um, a fort. I'd, um, and um, it's, a, it's a great place to, I've got lots of photos from there, um, I might post some of those just to show you how awesome it was. Um, and it's a place um, I would highly recommend you going. So it's actually um, part of the Paris region and it takes about um, two hours to get there on the train. So um, if you have a Navigo, then it's literally you just jump on the train here and you know have a little nap and then when you get there you can spend the day there walking around enjoying the sights. And, Obviously during the summer there's a whole lot of extra stuff that you can do. Um, so next is Provence. Beautiful Provence. Yeah, it is amazing. Highly, highly recommended going there. Um, I don't know what it would be like this time of year, but the summer was awesome when I went there. So. Um, so we're just walking down the length of the train station, past my uh, usual stop of Starbucks. That's where we usually hang out while we're waiting for our train. When we're um, heading heading home. Um, okay, so um, like I said, the the train station is in two halves. There was the original half, which we entered through, um, which was built um, in the 1850s, and this is the other half, which was done exactly the same style, but it was the 1930s. Okay, now if you have a look, I don't know if you can remember, but um, it's not as nice, and obviously it needs a facelift, but um, the architectural style is totally different, and actually those are very art deco, so, um, which is totally different from the other side. Lots of really great souvenir stores here, which I really enjoy going to when I'm here, just because they're so cool. Okay, well, I'm going to finish there. They also have McDonald's if you get hungry. Oh. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it at that. There's just a little bit about uh, Garden List. Um, and um, like I said, it's a place that um, I spend quite a bit of time at. So, um, yeah, I'm quite familiar with it. And my husband was very excited to hear that we were coming here today because this is literally like a second home for him. So anyway, we'll leave it at that. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, I uh, hope you're all doing well and uh, I look forward to taking you somewhere else uh, next Friday. Judy says, oh Jackie, we love your wanderings. Merci. 
thank you you're welcome and uh, we will see you again next Friday take care everybody salut